Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Shalom. I'm David Mensah, Israeli government spokesman for the National Public Diplomacy Directorate in the office of the Prime Minister. Questions in the chat, please, after a very few words from me. It's Wednesday, the 9th of October. As a reminder of Israel's war aims, the war will continue until all objectives are achieved. The return of all of our hostages, 101 of them, let them go now. The dismantling of Hamas's military and governmental capabilities, the elimination of the terrorist threat to Israel and the safe return of our northern residents to their homes. It's Israel's obligation, it's our right and it's our duty to protect our sovereignty and the sovereignty of our citizens and the safety of our citizens in accordance with international law. Let me start with uh, the message which the Prime Minister shared yesterday about his vision for a better future between the peoples of Lebanon and Israel. You can see it in full online on our website or just uh, on YouTube. Just a couple of key points. Firstly, the Prime Minister emphasized that Hezbollah, backed by Iran, has brought nothing but destruction and suffering to Lebanon. All communities have been impacted, whether it's Christians, Druze, Sunnis and Shiites. Israel made a clear call last night for the Lebanese people to seize the opportunity to reclaim their country from Hezbollah's control and restore peace and prosperity. Secondly, he called on the people of Lebanon to take a stand against Hezbollah's war against Israel, which has dragged Lebanon into chaos. By freeing Lebanon from Hezbollah, future generations can live in peace, avoiding the further escalation and suffering. It would also, um, and I'd also point you to the IDF's Telegram feed to get more details of the limited, localized and targeted campaign based on precise intelligence inside southern Lebanon. Next, uh, just this morning, Israel suffered another terrorist attack in Khadera. Uh, we know that this terrorist incitement seeks to kill Israelis. Our security forces remain on high alert. These terrorist attacks are the result of incessant incitement. It's directed by Hamas and Iran in an attempt to bring about more murderous violence against innocent civilians and ignite additional arenas. They will not succeed. So that's the end of our briefing today. Uh, please put your questions in the chat together with your outlet and we will take them right now. First question I can see here is from uh, Joel Pollock at Breitbart News. Is there any indication about uh, how Prime Minister Netanyahu's messages to the Lebanese people are being uh, received? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Joel. Uh, the message was put out yesterday. Uh, in addition, in previous days, over the last two weeks, the Prime Minister and the IDF have also put out messages to uh, Lebanese civilians. We've done it on, uh, with, on the internet, uh, with phone calls, w um, with radio stations, with flyers, uh, with um, emails, uh, with websites. We've done it in every possible way to tell the Lebanese people that our battle is not with the long-suffering Lebanese people. It is with Hezbollah. And we've urged them to get out of harm's way, to move out of the areas where uh, Hezbollah has taken uh, control or embedded their deadly weapons uh, into uh, people's homes, into people's where people's businesses are, to move out of harm's way so we can defeat this Hezbollah menace and then get our people, um, a get and for the Lebanese to be able to return home uh, after that. Um, so in terms of how it's been received, you'll have to ask uh, the Lebanese people about that. But certainly Israel is making every effort to get civilians out of harm's way. And I think this is a very powerful message which the Prime Minister gave yesterday, that there is a better future possible between Israel and Lebanon. Uh, our border is precisely where it should be. Um, there is no territorial dispute between Israel and Lebanon. It's called the Blue Line. It's precisely where the United Nations uh, asked for it to be. 
Um, it's been many, many years that Israel, I think 25 years, the prime minister mentioned last night, uh, that Israel has withdrawn from uh, Lebanon and a better future is possible between our two peoples. Hezbollah uh, are in the space between uh, our border and the Litani River directly in contravention of United Nations resolutions uh, 1701 and 1559 and it's incumbent on the Lebanese government to make sure that it's the Lebanese army that fills that space rather than the terrorist organization of Hezbollah. Next, is Israel offering uh, military support to the people of Lebanon if they rise up against Hezbollah? If not, what other support is uh, being offered? Thank you for that question, Joel. I haven't got any information on that. Uh, next question also from uh, Joel Pollock. Uh, there are reports that Hamas leader Yahya Sinwa is asking for a precondition to further negotiations, namely that Israel agrees not to kill him uh, during those t during uh, talks. Uh, is that true? Uh, thank you for that question, um, Joel. Uh, let me uh, share with you some of the uh, discussions, uh, were some, uh, some of the details which uh, our negotiator, um, Gul Hirsch, the coordinator of the hostages uh, and the missing Brigadier General uh, Gal Hirsch, his correct title. Um, just on Monday, uh, the day before yesterday, um, Brigadier General Hirsch he shared an update which you can actually see on the Prime Minister's website because it marks the year since the massacre of the October 7th of October 7th and the ongoing efforts to secure the return of our hostages. He of course together with the government of Israel and all of our people, express the deepest of regret that we have um, to our families and to our people for the delay in their return. And he emphasized that every single positive, uh, possible action and every resource is being utilized to bring them home safely. Now, Brigadier General Hirsch, in uh, interviews which he's given uh, in the last month or so, uh, has made some um, uh, innovative suggestions to how to move forward, uh, which I would encourage you, Joel, to take a look at. But just on Monday, he highlighted the urgency of the situation. He stated that all of the hostages are in humanitarian crisis and that priority must be given to get them home now, to get them free now, to for Hamas to set them free. He also noted that the challenges posed by misinformation and false narratives can actually undermine the, these, these negotiations. And despite the, despite the complexities, he also ensured that decisions regarding the hostages are made with extreme care and professionalism. Um, but I would encourage you, Joel, to look at some of the interviews which uh, um, Gul Hirsch has given uh, in the US in the last month or so, where he has made some innovative uh, suggestions to how to move forward. It is Hamas which is holding them. It is Hamas which needs to set them free. And it is Hamas which needs to uh, lay down its arms, release our hostages for the conflict uh, in uh, Gaza to be over immediately. Okay, the next question uh, you've asked, Joel, uh, number four. Uh, finally, if there are any updates regarding Christian communities in uh, southern Lebanon, that would be appreciated. Uh, thank you for that question, Joel. Just to, uh, the only thing I can add uh, to what I've said already is the Prime Minister mentioned specifically Christian communities together with other Druze communities and Shiite communities uh, and all communities uh, in Lebanon. Um, the quicker Hezbollah is ejected from that area particularly, uh, north of our border uh, and to up to the Litani River. Um, and I would add, the quicker that Iran is ejected from your country, the quicker, uh, and, and Lebanon, the quicker your country will stop being a failed state, even before this war. It, uh, Lebanon, unfortunately, has become, despite the proud history of the Lebanese people, Lebanon has become a failed state because Iran has um, has a malign influence on your country. They see it as a forward operating base against this country. And I think none of the media uh, make this point. Why, why is Iran up against our border? 
to further their aim to destroy this country. It's as simple as that. Uh, Ambassador Mark Regev made the uh, interesting comparison uh, when he said that it was similar to the Cuban Missile Crisis when the, uh, the um, uh, Russians, the Soviet Union, put uh, uh, missiles in, in Cuba to threaten the US. Uh, we know that this is a forward, forward operating uh, base of the Iran, of the IRGC, uh, and which means that we have the obligation and the right to make sure that we can no longer be threatened by this terrorist force on our border. Our operation in Lebanon has a very simple aim, to get our people home. Uh, 65,000 of our people have been evicted from their homes. It's obscene. They, no one should be a refugee in our own country. They need to be allowed to go home right now. And our military has advised um, the regional councils in the area uh, to start preparing for those people, for our people to be able to come home when this terrorist threat has been uh, eliminated. Our next question here I can see is from Hannah Julian. Uh, it's regarding uh, the, the Prime Minister and President Biden and a potential uh, phone call. Uh, thank you for that question, Hannah. Look, um, you know, as we've done throughout uh, these discussions and me uh, from this podium, uh, we don't give an ongoing uh, report on everything which is going on behind uh, uh, closed doors. But I I'll tell you very clearly, the US and Israel, we share a healthy and a productive relationship between two great nations. You know, our, contact, our contacts are extremely frequent. They are at every single level. Our nations are the closest of allies and our militaries are coordinated. And of course, we share the same goals as well. So uh, Hannah will keep you posted about any, uh, about future discussions as well, uh, as and when. Okay, that's the last question we've received today. Uh, no, there's one more question I can see there. A uh, question from... Um, uh, Jim Williams uh, from uh, Zenga uh, it's regarding uh, uh, Defence Minister Gallant's uh, trip to the US to accept uh, the invitation from uh, General Austin uh, thank you for that question uh, Jim uh, the Defence Minister has just put out a statement uh, regarding uh, his visit, uh, it's in Hebrew right now but I think it's about to be uh, caught, um, translated if I'm not mistaken uh, so you can see the latest on that from there. Okay, so that is the last question. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Our next briefing uh, will be tomorrow. We're available for interview and for any other questions you may have. Um, so in the meantime, please do stay safe and thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dijabnik signing off.